Update my wife 33F a 36M have been asked by my wife's parents 60SMF to take over raising my wife's sister's children 8 and 6F. I already have 3 kids 10, 7 5F, M, F and feel like I'll lose my mind if I have to take them, but crushed with guilt if I don't. Please help. I am really in a bind here and desperate for ideas. I am 36 years old. I have been married for 12 years to my wife who is 33. We have a 10-year-old girl, a 7-year-old boy and a 5-year-old girl. My wife has a younger sister who is an absolute train wreck and basket case. She is 29 and has already been married and divorced twice. She has borderline personality disorder and is an alcoholic. She has two girls, 8 and 6, from her marriages one from each. Both of her husbands were abusive losers to her and my nieces. The first husband split as soon as she gave birth to niece one and no one ever saw or heard from him again. The second husband is a drug addict who makes a hobby out of being unemployed so he doesn't have to pay child support, because of my sister-in-law's wild and crazy mood swings, suicide attempts, and alcoholism she lost custody of her daughters and my wife's parents, who are in their 60s, have been taking care of and, raising them for three years now. My wife and I visit her parents quite often and we are very close with them. We also see my nieces and they really are sweet girls although they do act out sometimes though who could blame them. Recently more family tragedy struck. My mother-in-law has just been diagnosed with terminal cancer and will have to start radiation and chemotherapy immediately. My father-in-law has arthritis and is starting to lose his hearing and sight. They recently approached us and asked if we would assume custody and raise my nieces, because they are just too old and sick to do it anymore. While my wife wanted to immediately say yes I asked if we could please have time to talk it over and discuss it, to which they graciously replied for us to take our time. Now while I genuinely love my nieces, and my heart breaks for their situation, I do not want to raise them. I am breaking into a sweat and fighting off a panic attack just thinking about it. I have a full-time job and three young and very needy children. My wife, bless her, is a very good mother, has a part-time job to help supplement our income and is a wonderful and supportive partner, but she is zero help around the house. She's terrible at keeping the house clean and is an awful cook. So after I come home from work, I have to cook dinner and make sure the house is tidy. I have my kids help out with the chores but of course they can only do so much. Then I have to spend time and play with my children, help with homework, etc. My wife helps them get ready for bed and reads to them while I do dishes. Then I have to make time for my wife. I am exhausted and overwhelmed. My weekends are spent cleaning inside and out and doing family activities. While my wife has promised to help with our nieces, realistically I know a majority of the responsibility will fall to me. I can't handle more stress. I can't handle the chaos of two more young children who demand attention and time. I am already spread thin spending time one on one with each of my children. How can I possibly give it to two more? That's two more mouths to feed, two more children to clothe, shelter and provide for and educate, and we will be getting zero financial assistance from the deadbeat Sill and her two ex-husbands. The thing is, my wife has no other siblings and I am an only child. I don't think there is anyone else who can take these children. My in-laws can no longer raise them. We are all that is left the only other option is foster care. I would feel awful putting my nieces in foster care, but I just don't think I can do it. I feel completely paralyzed. I've already had two breakdowns over this decision out of sight from my wife and children. I am depressed. I have no appetite. I feel like a failure as a man, as a father and as a family member. I can't sacrifice my children's well-being for my nieces. I won't be able to be a good father uncle to my nieces and I know I'll just be going through the motions with my own children if I take on any more responsibility, but I don't know how I'll live with myself if I let my nieces go into the system. I feel borderline suicidal by this point, but I am trying to keep it, together for the sake of everyone. I don't know what to do or think. Please help. Too long didn't read my in-laws have been raising my two nieces because my seal and her two exes deserve the worst parents ever award. My in-laws are too old and sick to take care of them anymore and have asked my wife and I to take over. I already have three young children and a full-time career and I just can't handle anymore. But if I don't take them, they'll have to go into foster care. I am starting to feel depressed and suicidal over this decision and I need help. Edit I sincerely appreciate all the replies. I am reading all of them. And aside from one asshole, these are all wonderful suggestions. I feel more calm now reading these responses than I have ever since my in-laws asked this of us. I am going to take a day off work and just relax. Go to a coffee shop and read a book. Then I am going to have a talk with my wife about everything and discuss options from there. 
It may take a while but I will post an update when I get a chance. Not sure why this post is getting downvoted a lot but a downvoted reddit post is the least of my problems obviously, thank you again everyone, I'll be sure to read through all the comments so I can get more ideas and advice. Update. And I know I promised an update so I am going to give a quick one before going to bed. I told my wife I desperately needed some time to myself so she was a complete sweetheart and watched the kids for me while I went to my favorite coffee shop and for the first 4 hours did nothing but drink cappuccinos and read. I then started to think about what to do about the problem with my nieces. It suddenly occurred to me that even though they had deadbeat fathers, perhaps the paternal side of fear family could be of assistance. That night I got home after my wife had put all the kids to bed and told her we needed to talk. I completely lost it and broke down sobbing. I told her I could not take her nieces. I told her how stressed I was with work. How exhausted I felt every single day doing nothing but working and being a dad. I told her she was a good wife and mom that I appreciated her having a part-time job and taking care of the kids when I was at work but I was starting to resent how I had to pick up her slack and cook and clean because she wouldn't do it. I told her I was considering committing suicide because I just couldn't handle the pressure of having to fix her sister's mistakes and that I already felt like a failure as a husband and father and was sick of life. My wife was white as a ghost. And she didn't argue or get defensive. Not once. She just gave me a big hug and started crying too and said she was so, so, sorry. She had no idea how stressed I was. How miserable that I hid it so well. Most shockingly she admitted she had grown lax in her housekeeping and that in retrospect she was just so tired from dealing with the kids all day and working to boot cleaning and cooking hadn't really been at the forefront of her mind. Since I'd been quietly making up for her slack and not saying anything she had just let it go unchecked. I told my wife there was no way I could take responsibility for two more children when I couldn't trust her to pull her load at the house. I said I was truly heartbroken for our nieces but that my children came first and I could not jeopardize being a good father to them or have them lack in any facet of life because of them. I said a decision needed to be made soon and there was simply no way I could trust her to prove she would change and start helping out more, and that we needed counseling because I was ready to end my life over how dreary and stressful things were. I also brought up we had no guarantees the girls wouldn't take after their parents particularly her sister, as teenagers and make all our lives miserable. She said she hadn't thought of that, and again how sorry she was and that I was right. She agreed immediately to counseling and that the dynamic of our home needed to change, that taking our nieces was out of the question when our own family needed some serious fixing. I could tell that my talk of suicide terrified her, and she was willing to do anything to make things better. She begged me not to kill myself, and then started sobbing and said she couldn't live without me. And too, please not leave her and the kids. We decided to talk about options for our nieces after getting some rest. My wife rubbed my feet until I fell asleep. The next morning we took the kids to the park and while they were running around on the playground we discussed what to do about the girls. I brought up the girls' father's families and asked if she knew any of them. She said no, but she could ask her sister for names and or contact info. Long story short we found out dad A had a brother, a married sister with kids and his parents. Dad B had a married brother, two sisters. One married no kids and the other with a boyfriend and two children, and his parents as well. My wife and I sent emails to all introducing ourselves and laying out our niece's plight, that their maternal grandparents could no longer care for them and that we were in no position to do so and were reaching out to see if they would be willing to take the girls who would have to be put in the foster system if we couldn't find someone. Dad A's unmarried brother and Dad B's unmarried sister with kids never responded. Dad A's sister, Dad B's brother and parents gave us varying responses which boiled down to sorry but no we can't don't want to. Dad A's parents and Dad B's married sister without kids both gave us yeses. But here was the tricky part, they were only willing to take one child. Dad A's parents were sweet and polite but firm in saying they had no interest in raising another man's child, or dealing with potential drama from another baby daddy or baby daddy's family. Dad B's sister was also kind and said as much as she would like to. She and her husband were barely making ends meet and simply couldn't afford more than one child. My wife and I were also in counseling at this point. We debated for a while about whether to just take our nieces or to put them in homes, where they would be loved and wanted but at the cost of splitting them up. I am sure many Redditors will bash me for our final decision, but it was with our therapist's suggestion we finally decided our marriage and home life was too much on the rocks and had not had enough time to heal to take on the huge responsibility of raising my sills children. Another long story short we got my in-laws in contact with the other set set of grandparents and dad B's sister and they are now in the middle of adoption and custody details. 
But from what I've heard is that the grandparents of Nisei and the aunt and uncle of Nisei will keep in contact and arrange in-person play dates and Skype sessions so the sisters can stay in contact with each other and not suffer permanent separation. We also told them that we still very much want to be in our niece's lives and would be willing to see them and have them for a couple days a few times a month or help in any way we could. This was a very hard decision to make for my wife and I, but, ultimately we feel we made the right one for us. We are still in therapy and are doing much better. My wife is a much bigger help around the house and bought a book of easy recipes tailored to terrible cooks like her. We also took Yuzismu's suggestion and started doing a bunch of crockpot meals. It's cut down on labor and clean up tremendously. In therapy I made a list of chores I'd like her to have done before I get home from work to minimize my stress. The list has really helped because she can focus on one checkbox at a time and has a visible reminder so she doesn't forget. Also thanks to Yuzizimu we realized we were being way too easy on the kids and gave them a chore chart as well they need to check off. With allowance on Saturday if they finished everything and didn't rush through it. Seriously, thank you so much for your post Yuzizimu. You had a lot of really helpful suggestions. Even though we didn't end up taking our nieces, our marriage isn't fully healed, but it's certainly recovered and I even look forward to coming home from work now. My wife really is a saint and a sweetheart and I feel like I am falling in love with her again. Quick note to say the sexism and misogyny on this website was absolutely insane. People, mostly men, calling my wife lazy and horrible and saying she did nothing all day and was probably having an affair. When I stated in my first post my wife was a wonderful woman I meant it. Having three kids full-time and a part-time job is a lot of work. She was easily distracted and tired and cleaning just stopped being a priority. Since I always stepped up to the plate to cook and clean and never communicated my feelings, she had no way of knowing I was falling apart. She readily admitted her fault in the failure of our marriage and has truly shown she is fully committed to making things right again. I was shocked at the amount of hate shown on here for my wife and can only say there are clearly a lot of bitter and obviously single people on this site. My wife's parents are sadly not doing so well with the combination of cancer and losing their granddaughters, and my wife and I are trying to be as supportive and helpful to them as possible without jeopardizing the progress we've made in our marriage. My wife's sister is still a batshit crazy worthless excuse of a human being who actually had the goal to call my wife up and thank her for sorting out the problem with the kids and getting it taken care of and then asking if we had any money we could possibly spare to lend to her. My wife basically told her sister to go duck herself and that unless the money was for an operation to get her tubes tied to not ever contact her again. All in all life isn't great but it is better and I can definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel for me and my family. Thank you to all the helpful redditors who cared. The douchebags know where they can shove it. Too long didn't read told my wife everything about wanting to commit suicide and how our marriage and my life no longer felt worth saving. She stepped up to the plate. We contacted relatives of nieces fathers to see if they'd be willing to take them. The nieces are going to two different homes, but we'll still be in contact with each other and we will still be a part of their lives even though we decided not to adopt them. Wife and I still have a ways to go, but things are better and looking up. This is a great update. I am really glad that you were able to talk things through, and that you're both on the same page now. In complete agreement about the misogyny it's not a normal weekday if I don't get some hateful PMs about how I need to stop talking out my CNT or something but I am glad that it didn't affect your opinion of your wife at all. I am so glad you came back to update us. I was just thinking about you guys the other day and wondering how things were going. I think you and your wife made the right decision for your family. And it was really a stroke of genius to look into the paternal families and not assume based on the irresponsibility of the birth fathers. And I am so damn relieved you and your wife are in counseling and working towards both of you being less overwhelmed. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. I understand life is tough and you need to do what's right for you. But I just feel so horrible that the kids are getting split up. My so M39 had a similar thing happen to him and his brother when they were younger and honestly I don't think he's ever recovered from it feeling abandoned and alone. The worst part was his brother ended up in a not so great place. We think there was some abuse. His brother barely reached out to us for holidays etc. I've only met him once in 8 years. Life is tough. My mum and her two bio sisters were split up as kids when their parents died. She was later reunited with one and lived with her growing up. But their oldest sister they only got to see a couple times a year. They see each other more now. But she's much closer with the sister she grew up with. This was back in the 1950s, where everyone already had 3-5 kids. I 50 male found out my wife 49 female of 30 years had a brief affair November February and I don't know where to go from here or even how to make a decision. 
My 50 male wife 49 female was a stay-at-home mom, we became empty nesters several years ago, last fall she took a job working for someone who was a friend of ours. During the time she worked for him, she assured me he was gay, she would go out to his home after hours with my knowledge to help him with his computer or similar stuff. I missed her, I wanted her home, but it made her happy and I felt it was innocent, since he was gay. Turns out he isn't gay I caught her having sex with him February 7th. Over the next week she continued to contact him secretly while she said she was trying to work out things with me. I finally said I needed to see her Facebook, phone, etc. to see what had really been going on. Looking at her Facebook, I found out she had a number of single female friends whom she had been messaging about him and about me, and that she had been telling them awful lies about me for the last couple years, mirroring the negative things they were saying about the men in their lives. She claims she said those things to fit in, to be liked. She had done similar things a few other times in our marriage. Each time she had gotten together with a group of women who were upset, with their partners and said terrible, untrue or extremely exaggerated things about me. Each time she has promised she would not do that to me again. Looking at her Facebook and text messages, I also found she was coaching the man she was having the affair with to do the things she liked in bed. I guess that makes sense, but it's a hard pill to swallow. I love her, I am committed to her, but I have to have loyalty, fidelity and partnership. I am 50. This is the only life I have I can't wait another 10 years to see if she will be true to me. I don't feel I can talk to family or friends about this because it will permanently taint her in their eyes. No one has any idea what is really going on. I am coming to Reddit mostly to help me think through the process. She is away for the weekend at one of our son's houses. So I have a couple days to think. Here are questions I have. Am I being naive to think she will be loyal and faithful now when she hasn't been in the past? How do I determine the best path for my own life going forward? Too long didn't read wife 49 female has an affair after 30 years of marriage, revealing not just an affair, but a couple years of disloyalty. What things should I 50 male consider to make a decision about going forward? Hit like. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel.